A few years ago, I made a video on how to link your Google Home to Home Assistant so that you could control your devices connected to Home Assistant using your voice with Google Home. And that works great. But what if you wanted to do it the other way around and control smart home devices that are only connected to Google Home inside of Home Assistant? Well, a recent update to Home Assistant 2023.1 now allows you to do that. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set that up. But quickly, why would you want to do this in the first place? Well, most of us will want to connect all of our devices directly into Home Assistant so that it has the fastest and most direct access to our devices. Now, Home Assistant is obviously great and it supports hundreds, if not thousands of different devices, but sometimes you will come across a device that doesn't yet have a Home Assistant integration and it isn't possible to connect that device just yet. Or maybe it does have an integration, but it doesn't quite support all of the features and functions that you would like. But Google Home, for example, might. That's where this integration could come in handy. Now, there is a slight caveat with this integration. So by following this guide, you aren't going to end up with all of your Google Home devices exposed as entities inside of Home Assistant, where you can just press a button and use it as normal. That would be the best, but unfortunately that is not how it works. You can add it to automations and scripts and there's no issues there, but there is a workaround that you can do to get a button on your dashboard, which I will show you later. Just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that first, but let's get started. In Home Assistant, you're going to want to go to settings, devices and services and add a new integration. Then search for Google and select the Google Assistant SDK option. This will come up asking for some credentials. If you have configured the Google Sheets or the Nest integration in the past, then you can use the same credentials as you did for those integrations and skip creating new ones. However, if you haven't, then you will want to click on the link that says credentials. This will take you to a Google developer console where we can create our credentials. You'll want to make sure that you are signed in using the same email address that has access to your Google Home for this to work. Click create a project first and then name your project something descriptive so that you know what it's for. Then when you have saved your project, click configure consent screen. For the user type, you will want to choose external and then on the next screen, we only need to change a few options. Firstly, make sure it has an appropriate app name which defaults to the name of your project and then under the user support email, click the drop down and select your email address. Don't worry, this won't be visible to anyone but you. Do the same for the developer contact email address near the bottom too and hit save and continue. On the scope screen, you can just hit continue and then hit continue again on the optional info screen. And then on the summary page, hit the back to dashboard button and then hit the publish app button to finish this section and confirm. Then from the sidebar, select credentials and then create credentials from the top bar and select OAuth client ID. For the application type, select web application and then give your credentials a name once again. Then under the authorized redirect URI section, hit add URI and enter https colon slash slash my.home-assistant.io slash redirect slash OAuth and hit create to save. It will then pop up with two things that you need, the client ID and the client secret. Copy the client ID first and switch back to our Home Assistant tab. Enter a descriptive name into the box and then paste your client ID into the client ID section and do the same with the client secret. Once done, click add to finish. A new tab is going to open up asking you to select your account to give permission. So go ahead and do that and click link URL. Click finish and the Google Assistant SDK has now been added. There is one final thing to do on the Google console. Click on library from the left hand menu and then search for Google Assistant and select the Google Assistant API item and click on the enable button. Now back on Home Assistant, you will notice that we can now see the Google Assistant SDK integration, but it doesn't have any entities that we can actually use. So what's the deal there? Well, like I mentioned earlier, this doesn't actually bring in all of your entities from Google into Home Assistant like we would expect from other integrations. The way this works is that it gives you a service that you can type commands to in the style that you would speak to your Google Home speaker with your voice. 
let me show you. Head over to Developer Tools and then click on Services and search for Google Assistant, selecting the Google Assistant SDK Send Text Command Service. Then tick the command box and enter something that you would normally say to Google Home. So for example, I can say, set the Shelly TRV to 20 degrees or turn on the bathroom light. If you hit the call service button and watch the Google app at the same time, you should see that the change happens within a couple of seconds. So now you can use the Google Assistant SDK in your automations and scripts with this simple service that allows you to interact with their devices connected to Google Home from within Home Assistant. That's great for automations, but what about if you wanted a button for your dashboard? It would be great if we just got a bunch of entities inside of Home Assistant, but because it doesn't, we can use a workaround. One way would be to create a template button using that service, but because we have no way of retrieving the state of a device, the easier method is just to use a script. Head over to Settings, Automations and Scripts, select Scripts from the top and then create a new script. Name it whatever the action will be and then for the sequence, add an action and select the Google Assistant SDK Send Text Command Service, same as before. Enter the command that you want to happen, i.e. turn the bathroom light on and then save your script. Then head over to your dashboard and edit it and add a new button searching for your script from the entity dropdown and hit save. This has now added a button onto your dashboard that uses the Google Assistant SDK service in the background. This isn't ideal and you may want to consider using a template button to get the on and off functionality in one button as well as do more advanced things, but this should be a good way to get you started. And there we go, that is how to add Google Assistant devices into your Home Assistant so that you can get even more control over absolutely everything. This might be a really good addition for devices that just have no other way of getting them into Home Assistant, but maybe do have a Google Home support, then yeah, I could see this being very useful. In fact, let me know down in the comments which devices you are going to be using this for. I could see things like perhaps a smart vacuum being popular for this since a lot of them don't seem to have HA integrations or maybe things like door locks or that type of device. Anyways, that's about going to do it for this video. Really good to be back doing a tutorial. It feels like a hot minute since I've done a quick how-to guide. So it feels good to be back doing one after this time. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. A few years ago, I made a video on how to head over to script. Nope. Well, uh, that was the wrong connotation, my dear.